All right, welcome back to another plan explain. Got one table, two K, two tables of one K, all reg battling. You're just gonna fold. Um, I think this will be the fun. Uh, so your BBB. Check a lot. I think here the Ten of Clubs is probably worse for betting simply because we don't love when he has a BFD when we build the pot. I think it, most of the time this hand probably makes money betting, but I'll play a bit tricky versus a solid player. Um, here we block the checkbacks, and also we block the calling range, so I think it's a pretty good check call. Obviously, in your pool, I would focus more on... Sorry, I'm waitlisted a bunch of 200s before these games go. Um, this is GVB as well. This hand could be a cold shove. Um, I don't really play that range, but I know it is, so I'm just going to stick to call here. It could be a cold four here. I'll roll again. I like to roll twice. Obviously, roll the 78, but I think I'm just going to stick to it. With the, with the UGD open, I think it's probably too loose, actually. I think the Jack is. The Jack's probably blocking a little bit of folds from him, a little bit of folds from him. So. Not to mention, I do think people over call the spot. Like my range is very strong. Uh, people will still call their stuff because people just love trying to crack aces, for example. Um, Jack 8. Sure, I think I'm just gonna fold. Pretty sure it's like kinda close. Obviously we'll hit two pair, but first should I set this? Now here we gotta decide what to do on the river. Obviously we have a king that plays. Jack X kinda blocks bluffs. Um I think he's gonna have a lot of underpair. Obviously we kinda block calls. Probably gonna have to bet for the size to be honest. I don't see the point of blocking because I think a king is still relatively strong. Obviously, we might have some 10 9 suited, other stuff. Could even have a hand like King 10. So this is a hijack open, right? I don't know how much this gets in here. I'm just going to fold. Just fading the cold four spots to start the video. I don't know. Okay, here's overbetter check. Obviously, heads up, you don't love overbetting a king, but in 6 max, in the spot, I think just a w the worst king you can basically have in your range. You're going to fold out their king X, so there's some benefit. Obviously, it doesn't really matter when the king comes on the turn, but we have the diamond. It's a good hand to turn to a bluff, not to mention the 6 unblocks the most folds. If I have a hand like king 9, you got to block the hands like 9, 8, 9, 7. Um, where the 6 isn't going to interact really at all with his offsuit range. Not gonna be a high enough number for me to free bet. Here I the small size for my opponent. A lot of people will range bet. King high is pretty decent. Just check back, and obviously the ace should hit his check back range a lot on double FD board. I'm pretty much gonna bet two pair here plus, and go with the really really big size because he's kind of capped. And I think our hand can play okay in the check check line. And I think we just in order to to. Even though exploitatively, I think this is like always pretty low pair or something weird. I just think we're just going to play our hand, which is we have the second best showdown non-paired hand we can have. So we'd be turning literally every non-paired hand into a bluff here. It's probably too much. Even exploitatively. Not to mention we block folds. Right? King 10 could easily, like my exact hand, could play the way he, his hand just played very easily. And usually when that's the heuristic, you don't want to. Because I, I, cause picture it, he could have king of spades, 10 of diamonds, right? If I had a hand like 9-8. Nine 9-8's eight. Nine way less likely to play that way. But... Yeah. Maybe maybe not bluff river. I think he could maybe check river with king 10, but that, that... yeah. point is basically if you if you're bluffing a hand and your opponent has it in his folding range the exact same hand you have and it's in his folding range we're gonna roll here 77 let's do it it does open wider i believe because he plays a smaller size it's not like the craziest thing ever it's gonna be pretty much pure and here you have to be careful. Obviously, you have the, the strong pocket pairs, but you have a lot of trash in your checking range. Not to mention, versus a wreck, 
Uh, we're just going to keep its range wide here. I don't see the point in thinning it out. Don't benefit much from fold. I don't expect him to fold a main hand. And basically, we have the second best non main hand. So sometimes it's important to. It feels good when you have bad half pot here and they fold, like you did something, but. Obviously, equity and all out of position is a very big thing, but. Obviously, going all in here. Any bets, especially this weird size, I'm just going to have to call one. And evaluate river. I don't really believe the value range here on the river, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to. Like, he's obviously just repping a jack. I don't expect recreationals to go super thin. The snap jam. Fuck. I'm going to call, even though I don't love it. It worked out. Here, obviously, opponent has to lead. The reason you lead is mainly to keep me indifferent from checking back. Um, In theory, this hand does jam in practice. I don't know if people are aggressive enough. It's a four better. I want to just toss. I'm just going to exploitably fold here. Should I be three bet should I be three betting that hand pre to fold to a four bet? No. In like in theory it doesn't make sense, but he sized a little up. Yeah, he's just leading twice. It could be a seven, could be an eight. We have the best seven, second best seven. I don't know what this line is. It doesn't really make sense. Not aggressive enough to, to give me to fold out the eight X he wants me to fold out. Not to mention he polarizes himself just against a lot more nine X. Over two with two kind of wrecks. I don't know if this guy's actually a wreck though. I'm going to check here because I took forever. You know, I, I, I think I don't mind betting the hand. Probably likes betting more with a spade. Because naturally, you can fold out some random offsuit if you're sizing up. A uh, random suited backdoor 8x and 7x hands. You give the, the spade. You benefit more from folding this out. Um, on the turn here, I guess we, we can bet. Because we're going to need to type a hand on certain runouts when your queen or a jack comes in. I don't know if this is really a B33 spot. Let's roll here. I'll call it. I, I, you could fold here as well. I think it's probably fine. People are a little too tight from the big blind, in my opinion, usually. Um, here, we're just going to make him indifferent with a small bet pretty often. Yeah. Obviously, you have to be careful here, because if you're just pure reopening, then you can just check range. But yeah. You can benefit from folding out a lot of... Uh, Jack X and 9X, in case 9 of clubs can be tossed up. Makes our hand easy to play on the turn. Um, I might just take the free card here. I think we just have to bluff River. We're going to have so many bluffs here, and we're definitely going to not want him just to see, see Rivers for free. I'm just going to jam up here. Kind of lost track of the hand. If he rips, I mean, it, it's a well-played line as a bluff, but I don't expect to see it not too often. We could just easily have a snap call. And our value range is really wrapping snap call to jam. Um, obviously, if it's a very good player, they might they might recognize that um, maybe it's not believable to check back a 7 too often. Though it's really easy, too. Like, I've seen people get too tricky. Do I think, in theory, it makes a lot of sense on the turn? No, but probably would have been folding. I think in general, when people people feel like you're, you have a strong snap off range, they don't like to bluff into you. They like bluffing when they they think you have very little snap calls. Just uh, just like I think it's like psychology a little bit of like even though four flush boards are really overfolded um to bigger sizes because people only call the nuts and mathematically everything makes sense for you to be printing in that spot. People just remember the times where they got snapped off by the nuts and they just they don't like bluffing them as much uh, generally. Um, half pot here could make sense. It's kind of capped. Um, I'm gonna go half. I I I think smaller could, but but out of position, you kind of want to deny a little equity most of the time, and maybe actually play a checking range instead. I could check aces here in kings, but I don't think queens is queens is just a pretty easy half pot. It's tough for him to defend. I mean, obviously he wants to call all pairs, but then pairs are awkward because they're pretty much drawing dead on that board, so. Put him in a tougher position usually by going by sizing up. When you go small, you can start easily floating these backdoor flush row hands. Um, but when you go when you go bigger, um, he can't just fold all of them because simply he just he's folding everything. It just me betting half pot, I would just win 90% of the time. 
and when he called, he'd have tens. So. Um, here on the jack, I guess I just check. It took forever. Obviously embarrassing to lose that. 78, I guess I'll call. Might be losing. I think this is also a fold. But yeah, sorry, I was in Vegas for a while, and I couldn't get a good video. Let's try and record. I think here without a spade, since our raise size is going to be bigger here. Um, naturally, we're not going to be raising ace-jack and ace-queen on this type of board. Or maybe ace-queen, obviously, but like that's going to be the bottom. A bit, maybe even a little ace-jack, but it's more just... It, it's built around two pair, and you might have some one pair to keep them honest. Because maybe you don't want to be too polar. Um, obviously, if he's range betting, we're kind of killing him on this card. So I am going to lead, actually. It's, I do expect opponent to check back a lot of the times. I expect him to have a lot of mergy hands here that now we're kind of struggling. Because when we call, we probably do, in theory, have the range advantage on this board. And yeah, finds a raise, and we have a pretty easy snap fold. Because you you, you, a lot of times you lead in spots where your opponent is going to check back a lot. A lot of people make it make it to be things that it's not. They make it to, to be... Um, I don't mind raising here as a bluff versus the wreck. I feel like he might just be overstabbing. They make it out to be like, oh, when the equity advantage changes, when this, when this, that changes. But most of the time, the reason you lead is simply because you want to make your opponent indifferent to checking back. And a lot of the times, like, you, you, he kind of has like a huge positional value over you. and. Okay, I guess we'll block here because he could just be doom floating. Even though obviously we had a pair and kind of awkward, but he took forever to call, and I feel like recreationals just don't take that long. It's awkward now because I feel like how could I have a buff? But it's a wreck. I don't know if he's gonna actually care. Obviously, in theory, I should be bluffing this if I doom raise the flop. Go check back here, get a mount. Really easy for him to protect his checking range. We have a pretty decent hand, so not much equity. I think here you want equity versus something. Yeah, we chips, and we probably would have got away with it. But here we three have BVB. Was I UTG open? Let's just check back here. The combo draw. I just think I'm going to get floated here by a lot of his stronger overcard hands. And when I don't hit, it's just going to be very awkward. Kind of block folds, I think. Like ace nine, ace seven. Well, not really, because I blocked the suitor. But it's important to keep some some flush draws, some combo draws in your check back range. I don't see the point in not bluffing this, but... It's not going to. I think it's just a weaker ace, and when he hits trips, I'm just not going to bother. You could argue that it's always weaker trips when he opens, a uh, weaker ace when he reopens on the turn. Therefore, bluffing is probably not efficient because I'm, I'm going to have to follow up. Like, it's probably okay if I follow through a lot, but. Okay, so, here in theory, I'm sure jamming makes a lot of sense because how often do we want to reopen one pair? Um, is he going to lead? Too. I could see I could see the logic behind why he wants to do this because I'm gonna have a lot of bluffs with ace high. Um, that probably are a little indifferent to um but now when he leads there's no point in luck jamming. Because he, he probably assumes I'm gonna have a lot of bluffs with ace high, da da da. I mean if you flush over flush with me, he's gonna victory lap it like um the lead is the re <laughs> That's why I hate playing versus guy, but you know. He's a little annoyed. He like the fact that you're annoying to play versus a compliment. But. Okay. I shouldn't give away too much, but that, that's not really giving away anything. I just try to play normal versus. <laughs> but sometimes he'll, he'll like lead there, he'll flush over flush me, and he'll be like, ah, yeah, I got him with the lead. <laughs> just like, oh my god. It's annoying. I will give him credit. Like, it actually does get under my skin a little, so. Okay. Here, check, check, check. See, it's a like kind of a range bit on the flop. I think I can just commit to the pure give up. Yeah, I guess that will bluff. Why not? The overbetter check here. 
I didn't mention anything about it. Sorry, I have some spots I am talking and then I forget. I mean, uh, yeah. Obviously, you could range this board. It's not, it's not as egregious as like a ace king board. Um, do you have any reopen? You could probably honestly bet a jack. Like ace jack. So I don't know. Bet how pot. Simply just due to how tough it's going to be to defend. I mean, he clearly doesn't have a king very often and he clearly um, is not going to have a queen very often. So, in order for him to. I think here we mostly fold. I'm sure you could 4-bet maybe very low frequency. Might just be Jack-10. So here's BVB. With the diamond, it's probably better as a check. It kind of sucks getting check, call check calling, but it's not impossible. Like, I think it still makes money. I've been recording for 15 minutes. I really hope my mic is good. And he finds the pot size bet, and we're gonna fold. I don't really love range, but any types of boards um, out of position with such a wide range, it's pretty much impossible. Um, if we we're deeper here, you could definitely consider calling this hand. Not just due to the nature of how polarized the big blind is. Yeah. Ten seven, I think it's too weak. Five, I believe, is too weak too. Um, yeah. So sorry about not posting for a while. I hope my mic is okay in this video. I'm not using the mic I usually use. Um, here, I don't know the heuristic of the blocker, but it's all better checking on. Assuming a club is going to be pretty decent with the 10 of clubs, it's going to add equity. So, yeah. Okay, definitely, probably mostly check turn. It's not a great turn in general for my range. King Jack's on is good. Obviously, King Queen gets there, but when straights get there, it kind of equalizes it because he was calling. He probably does call most 10-9. Obviously, you kind of probably have a little bit of a nut advantage over him, but I'm going to check here. And we do kind of bingo. Um, obviously, he's going to have a little, probably more ace 10 because like, I don't know how appealing it is to, eight, to um, overbet ace 10 on the flop. And it is an ace. I'm probably just going to call here, to be honest. I do like to raise the spot a lot as a bluff, but I just think this is such an appealing spot to, blo to, um, to block raise ace 10 that I just. Just don't want to like he could he could jam that if I raise. So, call here, gonna call here. Yeah, it's a very good board for this guy. Probably a really good board for me too. He should be checking range in the spot. I imagine. Check at least. I'm gonna check very often in my spot too. Obviously, this guy's pretty concerning with the flat flat. Could easily be pocket sevens, pocket nines, ten nines suited. Obviously, sometimes it's just very low pairs. The guy is pretty aggressive three better, and he does find a flat. Simply due to the fact that this guy could be checking range too. I don't want to necessarily reopen too wide. Also, we get some extra EV if we do have the nuts. When we have pocket tens here, because if he has, if we have the threat that we could check often, and he reopens, then we put pressure on this guy. Guess I'll just check when I take this long. Kind of was busy, too busy yapping about the one hand. I bet. Obviously, I expect to get called by an ace a good amount here. But... I have four high. I like no reopen because there's simply like we can only hit a diamond and we don't necessarily even have that good implied odds when we hit our diamond because our flush is so low. So if he's check calling like an ace high flush. Yeah. And not to mention we're gonna give up the river almost every time. So um, 
or just betting like you don't love betting hands on the turn that when they when they they have to check back river a lot like when they're not going to follow through out very often um when you're going to get floated by like uh, let's say i get floated by jack 10 of hearts here and then i check river it's just a disaster so it's just hard to you, you kind of have to find the double if you bet the hand with no showdown like this or you can just check back and have some flushes in your check back range but what is this check 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 all the way down and then he reopens in the king we have the jack of hearts i mean we just blocked too many bluffs probably Damn, I kind of like this call, though. Yeah. I block King Jack, so I was thinking, eh, block King Queen, King Jack. Not the worst. Like, if I had a hand, like, a worse ace, obviously, maybe I have slightly better unblocking properties, but I don't think I block as much value, and this value range clearly built around the king, so I don't mind it. I mean, it's really easy for him to have a hand like 6-5 here, 5-4, because you're going to actually give them up. I don't mind one third here. You're gonna fold out some better ace -X. If we get raised, we don't really care. We have the club, which adds the extra EV. If I had the ace of clubs here, I'd probably be a little more cautious with this hand because it doesn't really want to call a raise. Um, it doesn't really want to call a raise. I'll burst the min raise, I guess. Because it doesn't want. To, sorry, because it doesn't really want to call a raise, and the ace of clubs is too much equity to really want to fold. So I'd probably prefer to check that and then bet ace-10 with a club or ace-6, ace-7 with the ace of clubs. Because those are stronger hands that can actually call a raise. So it's kind of like a, in a different equity class. It's like... The worst thing you can happen is you don't mind betting reopening a hand that's going to fold to a raise and you don't really mind reopening a hand that can call a raise. The worst thing you can do is reopen a hand that's stronger than a hand that would fold to a raise. But it's still not... Either it will call, but it loses a lot of its EV. Or it like doesn't call. And I'm just going to give this. So here I checked. I don't love the check, but you know what? Now we're getting tricky. I'm going to reopen half flop. I should have bet flop. I think it was a mistake. I'm just very passive from the small player in general. It's not the worst thing ever. And here, uh, with the stronger pair, we're going to check very often. You got a weaker pair. You can get value from 6x. And I'll probably check twice. Maybe the best street to get value on is now. Where's your place? Ooh. How long have I been recording? 22 minutes. I record a little longer and then send over to my other video. I should refresh over here. Here, over better check is probably good, and I wonder if no BFD is good. Well, 92, does this hand do it? I guess I'll just call. I'm sure this hand probably does it a little bit. I like big size, people like to play small here. I don't need it. I better just protect my checking range. It's okay though. I'll call. I'm gonna over bet here. If I do, I'm not supposed to have it pre. I just realized I'm just playing too much heads up. Oh. I think most hands with the deuce here will just want to overbet. Just unblock so many folds. And I'm going to overbet twice now because then it can't like that he floated like king 10 and king queen. Uh, queen 10, king queen, uh, king 10 will easily call one overbet and they will probably fold. Turn. Obviously, we kind of block some folds with ace 5, ace deuce. Off suit and suited. But the deuce is going to be. The least threatening version of all those hands. For example, if I had a hand like Queen 10 there, you're a little more careful to overbet the turn simply because we both have a gut shot. Effectively, we have like the same type of hand. You might have slightly better value blocking, but the amount of folds you block is going to be way, way more. You're going to block King Queen, Queen 10. Your exact hand, like I said, he, he doesn't have five dudes suited really. So. Or five views off, so I don't have to worry about that. So my my the amount of folds I'm gonna get on the turn is gonna be exponentially more. If I have in like five deuce, and most of the time I think people think too much about the river. They just start the hand thinking about the river. And I think you need to focus on each street on its own a little. Obviously the like the the whole picture on bluffs on different runouts important, but it should only add EV to your hand. 
for example, if you, if you have a bluff on the river that like you need to have this hand to have bluffs on the river, you should think about like, is this actually river going to be overfolded though? Because people don't expect me to have enough bluffs. For example, sometimes people will. I thought I could move Queen's Mate to Bishop here. I'm sure it's also fine in theory. Now I'm stuck hooked on the river, which is unfortunate because I have like the one Doom under bear. Over bets here. So I unblock. I've showdown, but my deuce is just an unblocker. So I just have like a king high with an unblocker, basically. Like double unblocker hand, which in theory is good. I just don't know if I really think. Ryan bluffs this node, but I know you all in the comments think it definitely is. <laughs> so. I guess I'll call him. Why not? And he did. He usually doesn't take those types of lines in general, like the delayed over, but. Oh. Sometimes when people do a line that they don't usually do, you have to just think about. Obviously, I have no reason for a good player like Ryan to assume one way or the other. Here's going to check range, but I'm still going to reopen small most of the time. I fall here with the 5 4. I fold sometimes, but I will fall because we're recording. We get more hands. Um, 10 9 here versus the big bet. I'm just going to go ahead and fold. We have so much reverse implied odds that I just don't feel like calling. Mainly just calling here. Play some raises, but obviously, I don't want to raise fold this hand. It would just be a disaster. Raise call. Damn, everyone just left, so I'll leave. And here, I think he's just so capped that we're just gonna mainly rip and small. Because it's just the best price to make most of his hands indifferent. Obviously, there's some certain niche hands that maybe we make more indifferent by going bigger. And here, just B75, you can. I have a lot of hands. I have to be stabbing air on the flop, which you might predict that I do. But... Yeah, I think it's an okay call. I think there's more value to be gained here versus Rec. Call here, obviously, you could have like set two pair type hands, but <sighs> here I don't think I love betting this hand. Um, we actually have increased track back EV because some Queen X, and he's not really gonna fold Queen X of clubs here. So, actually, I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna say some Queen X of clubs hands that he has. Um, we wouldn't benefit from denying because we have it. Obviously, we're going to call here. Not going to play any raises really on the turn because we really do cap ourselves. So our hand definitely, if he bets, I think we have one of the best raises in the deck now. Block jack, nine of hearts. He obviously could have jacked. But when he does this, we just go to showdown and maybe raise. It's interesting to know that he doesn't bluff this. Obviously there, I still probably would have had to roll. Because if you just look at your exact combo, you're actually going to have a lot of hands that look pretty as bluffs. You're going to have a lot of nines that double block jack nine. You're going to have a lot of clubs, also club nines too. Think about your value range, it's going to be less than the amount of like hands in that. That's to be set in, in your in your stake. I'm said your elo. I'm playing too much league, but in your stake, um, you don't really need to think like that as much. Um, even in my stake, um, I think if you want to really make money in poker, just think about is the line going to be overfolded or underfolded? Is your hand going to actually make that happen right now? As opposed to like the 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 idea of theory of like building an entire strategy and playing that is important because you want to really understand the spots. But at the end of the day, you should usually ninety nine percent of the time, unless you're versus like a reg that you play versus twenty four seven, um, just play for the EV now instead of like the future EV. By that I mean like if you think I play is plus EV, just do it because that's gonna you just always do the plays that are plus EV right now. You'll probably make more money. Lead here. Obviously, we have way more 7x than him. Um, yeah, I'll leave. People tend not to raise enough. And also, I don't mind folding this hand versus raise. Obviously, Ryan be doom raising. If anything, maybe he's over raising. 
old. Guess we can't even really improve to beat a queen, so. I don't mind overbet. I would say tennis bait. Tennis bait is probably actually better in the overbet line because he's not folding a 10 no matter what. So if he does call a suit to 10, I'd rather it not be a backdoor flush draw on the flop. Obviously, there's some nodes on the turn where I think we roll here because we could floor bet this. Be sure. Like 10 9 is too good or something. But... Man, this hand is odd. Okay, probably lose. Definitely have to bluff here. I mean, not bluff, you have value, but you could have jacks. This guy does like to jam it in. So kinda hard for me to imagine what yeah. ball here. Deeper. We check twice here. Probably fine. And then on the river we can check honestly check jams come out. Okay. Oh, that's such a yikes, man. Oh, wow, what a cooler. Okay, so here, what does he block like eight? Yeah, so hopefully it's not a better flush. Um, we just we could either bet small. I don't see too much of an incentive, so I guess we're just gonna check and try to shut down. He's gonna float a lot of ASX, and we do have to check back a good amount. I do think we want to play probably a bigger size this deep. So let's just check. Ace eight. Yeah, it's me. Unfortunate. I don't know. I think this hand is a little punt. I don't know. Maybe I didn't size up big enough in the first place. I just think probably floating too much. But. Obviously, you have the BFD, but there's not many turns you feel that good about when you hit your BFD. Obviously, having the ace is nice. I guess we have a lot of outs versus my, a lot of my pairs. It's just a lot of reverse implied odds. Probably stronger aces. I guess maybe the ace. Honestly, maybe it's in Thor's. It's probably, it's probably fine. You have the, the backdoor straight. You get some really good cards. And it's not that different from Ace Jack. I think I just call here. Obviously, it's like tempting to three bet everything from the big blind, but. I've been recording for 32 minutes. Probably gonna wrap it up here in a sec and start recording another one. Which I'll do that right now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and stay to the study portion of the video after. All right, welcome to the only hand I'm gonna review. There really wasn't anything to review, so I kind of just randomly picked this hand. So, yeah, sorry about that. I hope in the next video I can find a better review for you guys. I, as I, I skimmed the whole video and I just. Didn't find one hand that was remotely too interesting. But um, I figured I would just, I don't know, this was the last hand I was looking at. I was like, okay, we'll do this one. Um, you go half pot on the flop. That's kind of the, the golden size because you're not really range betting when you're a BVB because you're going to have a lot of this trash, obviously, because just the nature of how preflop plays. You want to be naturally more polarized to capitalize off of the fact that you get to close the action and uh, you get to play in position as well here. But mainly closing the action uh, tends to make you play a little less merge because uh, you really get the decision of if you want to realize, your, if you want to go to a flop with your hand, for example, a hand like queen eight suited here, uh, you won't have because it doesn't want to call a floor bet, but you'll have a hand like queen eight offsuit because it doesn't mind. Uh, I think everyone's heard me explain this concept a thousand times or other poker, poker content creators. Um, yeah, but um, So naturally you need to build a checking range because you're just range betting all this trash. Your opponent's going to min click you half the time and you're going to have to fold. So yeah, you're going to build your value range Still around your strong hands at the top, so it's a common, common heuristic. But anyway, the reason we uh, mainly check this hand, as you can see, it's pure checking the hand we ended up having in game, is uh, simply due to um, I think lack of blocking our opponent's value range, and then also the hand just isn't a very good um, two street hand. And when you get raised, which you're going to get raised a lot, uh, sometimes your opponent's going to not let you see four cards here or five cards, sorry, and you really want to see all five cards. Um, yeah, so a lot of these combo draw weaker hands, as you can see, all these weaker flushes um, for the most part. Um, obviously, you need to still bet some of them for it to be a little mergy, but for the most part, uh, they they like trapping because they get to uh, 
Their, their hand's pretty much nuts or nothing. You're not going to outdraw a 10. You're not going to hit a jack or anything like this. Um, you're not going to have an overcard, right? So you're really hitting the nuts or nothing. So you really want to see those five cards. But anyway, so we check back. Obviously, the reason why these BFD hands don't mind betting is they're going to actually uh, benefit from folding out your opponent's hand. Uh, like if I show you here, your opponent's cast the fold some of these hands, like Ace-9. So if you're betting a hand like 5-4 diamonds, well, now... Uh, on the on a diamond, you're gonna actually have a good more a good amount more EV than you would have had if you checked. So that's why your hand can gain a little EV there. But when you have the hearts, no one's folding a flush, so you're just isolating yourself to get flush over flush a little more often uh, when you bet, because all those hands that your opponent might have turned into a bluff uh, might fold the flop now. But yeah, that being said, if you if you know you're gonna hit a flush, it's probably okay to bet, but yeah. <laughs> you're never gonna know that. So um, turn, I believe it was. And yeah, here he's playing small to capitalize on the fact that we kind of capped ourselves by checking back, um, naturally. So and he's pretty uncapped, so he likes to just attack our weaker range, making more hands and different. Um, if you bet small here, uh, we're gonna be folding still a, a good amount of time. We're gonna have a lot of crappy hands. Whereas if you were to size up, like we're gonna be forced to call hands like a jack of diamonds here, a jack of spades. Um, what's a what's a weird hand to call? Obviously, king eight with a heart is a pretty fine call, but going to have a tough time already defending versus the B33, whereas if you were to size up, I'm sure we can call a very easier range to, to call. Obviously, the solver's going to bounce everything out, because he's not going to be 75 at an insane rate, but now you see there's a lot less mixing going on. Before, you saw a lot more mergy stuff, but now it's very black and white um, in terms of what I'm calling or not. I'm probably less indifferent than I was before. But obviously, in your games, I encourage you guys to go after leaks that your opponent's going to have. So, if, for example, if you think he really isn't going to call call B75, like he's really capped, like he would never check a flush draw, and he's not going to call you down, then you could B75 and just jam. And because he might call the B75, you'll make more when he folds river. And then if you B33 and jam, you're not going to make as much when he folds river. Um, two. Anyway, that wasn't even the action. Uh, half pot's a, a good size here because obviously we're basing our value range mainly around the the uh, the queen, and like obviously trapped over pairs, we are not really uh, repping too many flushes. Obviously five percent flushes, but fifth like three times as much top pair, um, and then obviously some under pairs betting, which is jacks, not much ten x meaning. Yeah, uh, flushes is just there to protect our range, and. Uh, on the river, after we bet, he obviously doesn't play a lead in practice. I don't know why it's giving me that. Sorry about that. Link in the description for 10% <laughs> off. Not that it's a great look right now. Sorry about the studying portion of the video, but I figured I would review a hand, so I'm trying to, trying to mention some stuff. There wasn't anything interesting really stood out that I wanted to review. Hopefully in the next video there's something. And obviously here, I give him a check. He's supposed to fully range check on the deuce. It's just complete brick. So if he, it doesn't really make sense for him to lead because all the strong hands that he would raise here, he would have already raised. And then the hands that he committed to calling makes sense to keep protecting the calling slash checking range on the river. There's no swing that's shifted um, the range in my favor. I think he leads small probably with a hand like this, if I had to guess, to try and charge my ASX and thinking I will bluff over it less. Uh, that's just my guess. Uh, yeah, because let's see, let's give him some credit. What did he lead? Like 20%? It was like six big ones. I don't know if we got the pot exactly right. 15%. So we'll see what I have to call here versus the 6% versus this. But yeah, not much going to be calling worse. You see, you technically do have to call some King Jack. But in reality, it, it doesn't make money. Otherwise, you would be doing it. But yeah. Um, yeah, people can make mistakes or sit, which is obviously what he was going for. And uh, yeah. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.